szeretettel üdvözlök itt mindenkit, Cosplay Pontról és a Comic-Con színpanát. Most következő Hollywood sztár vendég nem más, mint Sean Biggerstaff, ugye akit a Harry Potterből Oliver Cookként is ismerhetünk, de igazán ugye onnan. Úgyhogy most ők következnek, fogadjátok őket nagy szeretettel. Hi Sean, how are you? I'm very good, how are you? Okay, so let's get it started. Uh, lots of people around. Um, I bet most people know you from your uh, Harry Potter uh, I assume so. roles, but uh, this is a comic con and uh, I've already seen a few doctors out there and uh, I, I heard that you, you were involved in the Doctor Who franchise as well. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I'm in the, um, I've been in quite a lot of the audio dramas that Big Finish make, uh, including for the last few years. Uh, I play uh, Georgia Moffat's companion in Jenny, the Doctor's Daughter, which is her uh, spin-off series. I don't know if anyone listens to the Big Finish. Guess not. <laughs> not yet. Uh, okay, and uh, your next film is called Hector and Himself. Can you tell us uh, about that a bit? Uh, no, that, well, I, I mean, hopefully we'll make that at some point, but that's a film um, written by a, a, a director, a friend of mine called Russell Thomas um, Owen, uh, so, who um, wrote it about, it was over a decade ago actually, and I've been attached to it for a long time. And we're still hoping to make it one day, but it's like, it's not even sort of top five things on his slate at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. He's, he's now doing very well. He's, he's um, had sort of three feature films made, so hopefully we will do it at some point. But uh, God knows when. It's about, uh, it's a really weird script about uh, a man in his 30s um, who's never been out of the house because he's kept inside by his insane, insanely overprotective mother. Um, so I'd be playing a sort of infantilized, uh, well, I mean, I'm now nearly 40 actually, when I, I was a bit young for the part when he first wrote it, but now I'm a bit old for it, but uh, yeah, I'd be playing someone who, who, you know, eats cereal and watches children's television and um, is just completely infantilized. It's a really interesting script, but don't hold your breath. Hi. Az új filmtervel, ennek a címe Hector and himself, erről tudom mondani valamit. Most az helyzet az, hogy ez még nem készült el, egy jó barátom Russell Thomas rendezi, de már jó tíz éve létezik a terv. Én viszonylag végig óta vagyunk benne az egészben, de Russell most éppen mással van elfoglalva egész estés filmeket forgat. Igazából nincs rajta az ötleg fontosabb dolognak, nincs rajta a is de ennek a filmnek az elkészítése. Ez egy kicsit fura forgatókönyv. Egy 30-as éveben járó fiatal férfiről szól, akit nem enged ki a házból az ő túlságosan védelmező édesanyja. Ami elég vicces, mert amikor elkezdtünk ezen gondolkodni, akkor kicsit fiatal voltam a szerephez, most pedig már 40 vagyok, úgyhogy már kezdtek kiöregedni belőle. De e, a helyzet az, hogy e, ez a srác otthon ül, e, az apáját kaján és gyerek tévét néz, és egymást nem csinál. Remélem egyszerűen elkészül. You have been involved in acting and filmmaking from a very young age uh, in, in an era when digital technology developed uh, very much. And uh, how much has it altered uh, filmmaking for the industry, in your opinion, or in your experience? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, um, the first film I was in was a thing called The Winter Guest that Alan Rickman directed in, uh, in the 90s. Um, and we had CGI on that, but just for like, they just created some extra like snow effects. Um, but at the time it was really cutting edge that they were able to take the film and and, and essentially, you know, uh, digitally draw on effects. Um, it certainly couldn't, I mean, you know, it was only four or five years later that I was working in things where, you know, it was being entirely digitally recreated for a scene and stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of night and day. It does mean that the actors have to spend a lot more time engaging with technology rather than just engaging with, with each other and the, and the works though, which is not great. 
in some ways. Sorry, I'm just completely um, taken because this is a, a film uh, that a friend of mine, Josie Long, who's a great comedian, wrote. And um, it was made in Glasgow for about £2,000, I think was the total budget. Uh, and it's never ever been on a poster at a Comic Con before. I'm going to send her a picture of that. <laughs> Sorry, I should keep them. <laughs> He's a legend, so. Not yet. Um, szóval úgy tudjuk, hogy nagyon fiatal dolog óta uh, színészkedsz, uh, és egy olyan időszakban nőttél fel, amikor a digitális technológia meglehetősen uh, erőteljesen befolyásolta az iparágat. Mi a véleményed erről? Nos, az egyik első filmben szerepeltem, az a Winter's Guest volt, amit Elárik berendezett. Ebben is volt már CGI, egyszer csak OS t illesztettünk bele a filmbe, ami akkor nagyon modernnek számított, és persze négy évvel később már olyan filmek készültek, ahol egész jelenetek vannak digitálisan elkészítve. Ilyenkor ez azt is jelenti, hogy a, a színésznek a technológiával kell valamit kezdeni, a technológiával kell kapcsolatot teremtenie, nem pedig más színészekkel, ami persze bizonyos szempontból, bizonyos szempontból nem jó, más esetben pedig kihívást tartogat. Ami pedig érdekes, hogy a, a, a háttérben pedig a Sean egyik barátja, Josie Wang által írt a, a film poszta szerepel, amit több a 2000 fontból forgattak, és sosem volt még komikon a, a so with, what, which do you enjoy better, or which, which uh, poses a bigger, or what kind of challenge? It was uh, working on a huge franchise like Harry Potter, or working on a, a low budget indie like this? Well, the, the challenges that you face when you're working on something small, from an actor's perspective, are probably more interesting than, more you know, dramatically interesting than the challenges of dealing with the kind of scale and the technology of a, of a, a massive thing. There's a, there's other things to love about being doing something, doing something huge, of course, like getting paid a lot of money. That's great. Um, but in terms of just the the, the the process itself, I think as a general rule, smaller things are are more interesting for actors because it's more focused on what the actors do. Nagy franchise-a jobb bedolgozni, vagy kisebb független alkotásokon. A vélemény, vélemény pedig az, hogy a minél kisebb, annál érdekesebb színészi szempontból a, a színes számára, mert jobban fókuszál arra, hogy, hogy a, a alkotón mit készít. És persze nyilván a franchise-nak is megvan a maga előnye, például jól fizet. These days, uh, actors uh, more and more take on video game work, as seen with the advancement of CGI and also voice talent. Have you ever considered such work, or uh, do you no. even do you play video games? As... No, I've, I've, I've never been a gamer, and I've never worked in games. I know a lot of actors that do, and, um, and it's now one of the like one of the biggest areas for for employment for actors, um, which is really fascinating. You know, I'd like to. Um, uh, a guy I know actually used to be an uh, animations director at Rockstar North. Unfortunately, he stopped doing that before I got to know him, because uh, that would have been a good contact to have. But yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd be up for it at some point, but it's, no, it's never not connected in that world at all. A mostanában nagyon előttől a videójátékban való szerepés szélyeszek számára. Gondolkodtál-e már azon, hogy hol ilyen szerepet vállalja? Egyrészt nem vagyok gamer, nem, nem játszom igazán sok játékot, viszont ami érdekes, hogy a, a videójátékok az egyik legkomolyabb munkalehetőség a színészek számára. Van egy barátom, aki a Rockstar North, Rockstar North volt animációs rendező, sajnos még az, azelőtt abba hagyta, hogy ezt a munkát hogy megismertem volna, pedig ebben ennek van rossz kapcsolat. Igen, érdekesen találnék egy ilyen munkát. Which do you prefer better, real, real life or the world of your favorite movies or TV shows? I mean, it would depend on which movies. I get. <laughs> like, sorry, it would depend on which which of my favorite movies or TV oh, yeah. shows. Well, yeah, it's up to you. I really like The Boys, but that'd be terrifying. Living that. No, I think I'll, I think I'll take real life for the, for the most part. But it's it's been it's been quite kind of there. Really? Well, uh... Do you think we're getting weird powers? <laughs> Maybe if they drink milk. 
a, mit szeretsz jobban a valós életet, vagy pedig a, egy, akár a kedvenc szerepeiknek a, a, a világát. Ez persze attól függ, hogy melyik szerepeiről van szó. Például nagyon szeretem a boys világát, de az elég furcsa nem um, Where do you draw inspiration from? Maui, or did you chat it about this a bit before and you told me it's not uh, your fellow actors or directors, but other uh, parts of life who inspires you? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not that there are no actors that inspire me, I do, you know, I, te I tend to find in strange places that when it comes to actors, um, the people that that I'm kind of most taken with and most inspire me as an author will, will tend to be people that that aren't very famous, but I've you know, just seen doing something that I thought was incredible in a the theater or something like that. Um, but no, I think I, I, I uh, because I've done this forever, um, and it's as strange as it sounds, it's kind of ordinary to me. Um, I'm much more likely to have my mind blown and, and be really inspired by a musician or or, or, um, or a writer or you know somebody that somebody that does something else. Um, I once played the, mu the musician John Martin in a play, uh, and that was incredible because it, it was just a whole different skill set involved that I, to some extent, already had but wouldn't normally use in my professional life. Uh, to learn, learn how to play guitar and sing exactly like him, um, and he's the he's the kind of legend. So it was really scary and challenging, but um, uh, that was really interesting. I having to kind of uh, absorb myself in uh, in a totally different kind of um, performance from just being an actor normally. Um, I'm 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 uh, droning on now, but. Uh, Chris Whitley, there's a musician called Chris Whitley, who's a singer-songwriter. He died young, unfortunately. Um, but if you're talking inspiration, that's probably the, the single biggest thing. Like his his music is kind of a daily part of my inner life uh, in a way that no one, no actor, ever has been. Honnan szerzel az inspirációt? Úgy hallottam, hogy nem igazán színészeket tekint az inspirációnak és vesző forrásra, hanem valahonnan máshonnan szerzel a, 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 az energiákat. Nem arról van szó, hogy a színészektől nem, inkább arról van szó, hogy a, inkább olyan emberek ösztönöznek, akik valami, akik hírsek és valami fantasztikus dolgot csináltak. Még mindig nem arról van szó, hogy a színészektől egyszerűen, arról, egyszerűen az a helyzet, hogy már régóta csinálom ezt, így aztán a, esetleg a fantasztikus színházi teljesítmények nem tűnnek annyira elképesztően, elképesztőnek számomra. De például egyszer egy színdarabban John Martin az zenészkedet játszom, az nagyon érdekes volt, mert egy teljesen más, teljesen eltérő képességeket kellett használnom, pontosan olyan, hogy kellett kitároznom és énekelni, mint ő. Ez egy kicsit ijesztő és nagyon, nagyon komoly kihívás jelentő feladat volt. De hogyha ha az egy, a legnagyobb inspiráció forrásról lenne szó, akkor egy Chris Wheatley nevű zeneszerző zenész lenne az, aki sajnos nagyon fiatalon meghalt, és szerintem ő volt az, aki, ő az, aki a legnagyobb befolyása van az életemre. A zenéjén napi szintek benne van a fülemben. Now, what do you think of the role of social media these days, especially as an, as an artist, a performer? It's kind of a vehicle for you to get your stuff out there, but uh, it's a gen general phenomenon uh, of, uh, that, that influences our world. How do you see social media? Uh, I, don't know, I think it's, I, I don't really, to be honest, I don't use it the way that actors, most actors do, or, or should, really, um, which is just to use it to promote things that I'm doing and shut up otherwise. Um, I don't really do that much. Um, I think it's interesting, and there's, a, there's an immediacy to it um, as a way of engaging with the wider world. I think on balance it's probably going to be a terrible thing for the world. Yeah, 
Nos a helyzet az, hogy, hogy a, az előadók nagy része általában úgy használja, hogy hirdeti a saját munkáját, aztán pedig a, a maradék ilyet pedig semmi más saját nem használja. Én úgy gondolom, hogy, hogy ebben az értelemben talán jó, meg van benne, van érdekesség abban az azonnaliságban, ahogy kapcsolatban léphetünk a közönségükkel, de összességében úgy gondolom, hogy bózasztó volt a világ számára. Okay, so uh, final question before we we'll open the floor uh, for questions from the audience. Uh, what what advice could you give to people who who are considering uh, going into acting or performing? You're asking me this because you already know the answer. <laughs> well, I do, but they don't. Yeah. No, I mean it, it's a tough question because I am. Um, I guess because I started really young and kind of done a couple of big things. A lot of young people that would like to be actors ask me for advice. And the fact is, like, in terms of how, how to go about doing it, I don't have any advice because how I went about doing it is that I got lucky at a young age and it just fell into my lap. And it's as simple as that. There's no, so there's no formula there that you can repeat. Um, and the only advice that I have to give them, unfortunately, is to do something else, probably, because the biggest, you know, the, Uh, it's, it's always been a really competitive and, and uncertain um, uh, and uh, irregularly paid uh, business unless you're you know one of the people whose names on the tin kind of thing um, but now it's 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 ten times worse than ever uh, there is no reliable model for making a living doing this uh, and so I tend to feel much as it, I hate seeing kind of enthusiasm die in young people's eyes, I feel juicy bound to be realistic about what the business is actually like and how slim the chances are of, of you getting anything like what you dream of from it. Um, yeah, sorry, that's quite a bleak answer. Uh, én nagyon fiatalon kezdtem, és um, olyan szerepeket kaptam meg, amiről rengeteg gyerek álmodik, hogy szeretne menni játszani. De az igazság az, hogy egyszerűen csak szerencsés voltam, és az ölem nem volt az egész. Úgyhogy a, az egyetlen tanácsom, amit adhatok, az az, hogy csináljátok valami más. Nagyon fontos dolog az, hogy ez egy minden eddigénél jobban, erősebben versengő és bizonytalan piac és megélhetés ahol nagyon-nagyon rosszul és nagyon rendszertelenül fizetnek. Kivéve persze, hogy a, a, te vagy az egyik ember, akinek a neve földön lapozta neknek. És a, az utóbbi időben talán tízszer olyan rossz, mert egyszerűen nincs megbízható modell arra, hogy hogyan lehet, hogyan lehet ebből megélhetést csinálni. Sajnálom, hogyha esetleg a lelkesedést lelombosztam valakiben, de a, a, a helyzet az, hogy viszonylag kevés esélyed van arra, hogy igazán nagy legyen. A kérdések ideje, a kollégánál ott a mikrofon, és, és már ott érkeznek is a kérdések. Hi. Hi. Uh, I would like to ask about the cashback since they put it on the monitor. Uh, I heard that it came from short film. That, that it, it, it was a short before it, it turned into a, a full night movie. What has changed? Well, almost uniquely, as, as well, this doesn't need to come out. Just, no. <laughs> uh, almost uniquely, maybe maybe completely uniquely, as far as I know, um, the short is in the feature film entirely. Um, so there have been shorts that have been turned into features where that was always the plan. They, they made a little, like a little bit of the film as a kind of as a kind of calling card to try and get funding for the whole film, or the being examples where people have made made a feature version of the short but they just started from scratch and done a bigger thing. Um, Cashback is the only example I know of where we made a short film. There was no plan of it being anything else at that time. We just made this 20 minute film. And then the director over the next couple of years was really struggling to get a feature film made. But Cashback the short was having like outrageous degrees of success for a short film. It was winning festivals all over the world. It was It was at one point like the number one download on iTunes for a month. Like, just really crazy stuff for a short film. Um, and so he thought, well, that's got all this attention. Um, maybe I could 
like expanding. I've got this 20 minutes I'm really happy with. So he made that the kind of first reel of a, of a feature film. He, went, he wrote a sort of 10 minute introduction, which slightly changed the context of what you see in the 20 minute film. And then wrote the, the last like hour, which changes the genre because it becomes, it goes from just being this weird little sort of, is it supernatural or is he just kind of dreaming in his head, kind of short idea to being just a full-blown romantic comedy, and um, which it wasn't. But so from, if you've seen the you've seen the movie, yeah. It's so from from the moment you first see me working in the supermarket, um, that's the start of the short film. And then when I set up the the pint of milk so that it's going to hit the manager's head, and I go out and I crack my fingers and I just smile and walk that's the end of the short film. And then the next scene, like you see me opening the door, it's supposed to be the next morning. And it's that's two years later. Um, so yes, the way, the way that it came about, I, I don't know about anything else that's, that's happened like that. It was really interesting. Kezsbek az egyetlen példa, amit ismerek arra, hogy a rövid filmből teljes egész esetésként készüljön, ami egy megdöbbentő élmény. A, a rövid filmben, a rövid film két évvel később, a rövid film két évvel korábban készült, mint a, a, a teljes, az egész esetés film. De az a helyzet, hogy a, annyira sikeres volt, volt egy időszak, amikor egy hónapig az itunes a lehető legtöbbet letöltött rövid film volt, ami elég fura és a rendező szeretett volna benne valamit csinálni, úgyhogy úgy döntöttünk, hogy a rövid filmet tesszük meg az egész estés első tekercsének, tettünk hozzá 10 perc, 10 perc bevezetést, amikor a, a rövid film kontextus egy kicsit megváltozott. Amikor azt látod, hogy, hogy a szupermarketben dolgozom, az a rövid film első jelenete, és amikor azt látod, hogy a, az újjaimat hapogtatom, az pedig a vége. A következő jelenetben, amikor kinyitom az ajtót, vagy kinyitom az ajtó, azt, azt lehetett már kettő évvel később vettünk fel. Következő kérdés. I've never played Quidditch. 
Because I, I, you know, floated in front of a blue screen, being filmed, and then all this kind of stuff was put in around about me. Um, I went to the the Universal Studios um, Harry Potter place in, in Florida, uh, and I went on the Hogwarts ride, um, and there's a part of it where um, suddenly you're in a it's a kind of a weird mixture of of um, stuff that's really there, and then a screen will appear, and it'll be like a you know screen-based kind of simulator, right? Um, and suddenly you're you're flying over uh, the Quidditch pitch at Hogwarts, and that was that was only like four or five years ago. I was suddenly struck by that. This is the first time I've, I've ever done this because I've never seen it from that angle before. You know, it's just like I, I sit there and like you know pretend you're flying, oh, 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 flying. Uh, and then everything else gets done. So I've, I've watched it, but I've never done it. So thousands and thousands of people had that sensation of flying a broomstick over the Quidditch pitch at Hogwarts before I did. I don't know it any better than anyone else. I was just I was just hanging in front of a blue screen. It's kind of boring, actually. A helyzet az, hogy sajnos sosem vidítsált igazán, ugyanis a filmfagatásokor egy kék képernyő, egy kék mező előtt ült egy uh, seprű, és a uh, mögé vetítettek mindent. De a helyzet az, hogy négy-öt évvel ezelőtt volt Floridában a Harry Potter, Harry Potter világban, és ott van egy uh, érdekes rész, amikor, amikor a aktuális lép, amikor uh, olyan, mintha egy szimulátorban ülne az ember, egyszer csak kinyílik, és olyan, mint hogyha a Rocksport fölött a Quidditch pályán repülne az ember, és akkor tapasztalta meg először azt, hogy milyen Quidditch ez még. Így aztán úgy az a helyzet, hogy az a több tízezer ember, aki elment a Harry Potter világban, mielőtt ő ellátogatott volna oda, előbb quidditch mint ő maga. Van-e még kérdés, hogy hátul már érkezik is a mikrofon? Hello. Hi. Um, in your career, uh, what is the most difficult to role uh, to perform? Um, if you understand. <laughs> what what ha what has been the most difficult role in my career? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, as an actor. Yeah. Um, the most difficult in 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 the sense of. How technically difficult it was to do, like the skills that were involved in in doing it, um, was when I, I played John Mark.